This is Terror House Radio with Matt Forney and Bryden Proctor. Yeah, welcome to a Terror House Radio episode number 18. I'm Matt Forney, the charming and loquacious host and the founder and editor in chief of Terror House Press. Joining me is my co host and producer, Bryden Proctor. How you doing, Bryden? Are you dumb, stupid, or dumb, huh? Is that like a line from a movie? No, that's fucking Takashi Six Nine. He's back, baby. That's from his new song Gooba. Oh, lyrical no, genius! You said, lyrical like genius. You said you, you you said you were listening to Gooba, but you didn't explain what it was before we went on air. Oh uh, yeah, no, Takashi Six Nine. He's back, dude. He's back. He's fucking got a new video. He wears his little ankle bracelet shit in it. He broke Instagram records. Got two uh, fucking million live viewers on like a seven minute fucking Instagram rant. It's fucking insane. Impressive, impressive. He's been out. He's been out for like a couple months now, right? Um, maybe a month. Uh, this is impressive. He's he's already back on the hustle. Dude, he's he's fucking amazing, and like everybody's glad that he's back. And he's just like he talked about why he fucking ratted on all those people. It's like. Well, they kidnapped me and beat the shit out of me. Uh, they tried to kidnap my mom. Like, you know, yeah. Why would I be loyal to people that weren't loyal to me? And, like, goes in this big rant. It's amazing about just, like, I would be mad, too. I, th- listen, fuck six nine. This is some Danny Hernandez shit. I would be mad, too. If a rat like me got out and started doing these numbers, I would be mad, too. I couldn't sleep at night. If a rat like me got out of, this, I got out of there the way that I did and started doing these numbers. I couldn't sleep at night. He's the best troll. He's the fucking best. I love Six Nine so much. Yeah, every, everyone's happy. I guess, I guess, uh, except Chief Keef. I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, Chief Keef probably not thrilled. I know Meek Mill's not thrilled, but uh, Meek Mill just fucking chose to beef with everybody and never wins. How do you lose a beef Meek with Drake? Mill sucks. Yeah, Meek Mill sucks. He lost a beef with J- Drake. Exactly. That's why he sucks. Yeah, he's fucking trash. He's dumb. Um, yeah, I but, fucking hate Drake. I don't know. I mean, I like Drake, but, you know, not in the same way that I put. Like, 6 9 is incredible. He's done interviews where he says it's fucking, you know, his lyrics are stupid. And he's like, I just don't even try. I just do this dumb thing and people love it. He's the best. He's the fucking best. Can- Canadian-, Canadian rap is like, you know, Catholic uh, condoms. You just don't. What are you talking about? Drake's good. No, he's not. God's Plan is one of the best fucking songs ever. Well, for, 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 well, again, for stars, I'm 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 inherently opposed to the idea of Canadian rap. That's cultural appropriation. Mm. That's our shit. Uh, that's an Amer- that's American shit. Nah, 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 son. Nah. What are you talking about? What about like fucking uh, you know? What about like uh, English rap? You know, grime. That's fucking that's, like good. That's fucking also rap. that's also cultural appropriation. Fuck them too. You might say I'm bonkers, but I just think I'm free. That's but it's more the, inherently offensive when Canadians do it. Listen, I learned something funny about Canadians, actually. Um, did you know for government jobs, they used to uh, uh, hook people up to the fruit machine, which was a gay detector test to decide whether or not they got it? Which is weird, because I didn't know that like Canada went without government workers for so long. Wait, wait, wait. Are you, are you being serious? Totally serious. Look it up. The fruit machine, homosexuality test. Wikipedia page. Look it the up. Fr- what was it? Was it a plethysmograph? I don't know. I just, I, you know, because uh... because there was a study. There there was a study. Uh, a plethysmograph is a device that can uh, measure. Uh, you put it over your penis, and it measures uh, st- erectile strength, like whether it gets hard. Uh, there was a scientific study done back in the aughts, I believe, where. They took uh, a bunch of self-identified straight guys, a bunch of self-identified gay guys, and a bunch of self-identified bisexual guys, hooked plethysmographs up to their junk, and had them watch straight and gay porn to see, you know, what what kind of a physiological reaction they have. And this study was interesting because uh, all the straight guys, like, had a, you know, they got hard watching straight porn, but not gay porn. The gay guys got hard watching uh, gay porn, uh, but not straight porn. So you would think that the study would show the bisexual guys getting hard to both. That's not actually what happened. Uh, 75% of them got hard to gay porn only, and the remaining 25% got hard only to straight porn. Hmm. Yeah, this is not a Bethesda graph or whatever, a B- 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 Batista graph or whatever. This, uh, they did make them view pornography. The device then measured the diameter of the pupils, 
uh, perspiration, and then the pulse. Holy shit, you're not kidding at all. I just I just found it on Wikipedia. Yeah. Fruit machine, homosexuality test. Fruit machine is a term for a device developed in Canada by Frank Robert Wake that was supposed to be able to identify gay men, derogatorily referred to as fruits. The subjects were made to view pornography. The device then measured the diameter of the pupils of the eyes, pupillary response test, perspiration, and pulse for supposed erotic response. The fruit machine was employed in the 50s and 1960s during a campaign to eliminate all gay men from the civil service. The, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and the military. A substantial number of workers did lose their jobs. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I told you. The chair employed resembled that used by dentists. It had the a pulley with a camera going towards the pupils, with a black box located in front of it that displayed pictures. The pictures ranged from the mundane to sexually explicit photos of men and women. It had previously been determined that the pupils would dilate in relation to the amount of interest in the, in the picture per the technique termed the pupillary response test. What in the, the fucking shit is this? I know. I told you. Isn't that fucking crazy? But yeah, like you know, they, they weren't using a plethysmograph. I don't think a plus I don't think the plethysmograph had been invented back then. Yeah. I mean, well, I think whoever invented the plethysmograph or whatever just wanted to deal with wieners. Which, you know, God bless you, you know, good for them, but uh, you know, you don't gotta make a whole science thing around it. Just just say you like wieners. That's that's fine. Do whatever you want. Well, I mean, they, you know, the professional graph serves one useful purpose. It basically proved that bisexual men don't exist. Well, except for that 25%, right? So, if no, really, if we're, going with the, the, if we're going with the scientific method, then we would say that it's just extremely rare. The, the 25% only got hard to straight porn. Oh. So not nobody was just a fucking horn dog and got horny to both? I I dare say nope. I would need to... I, no, you don't know that. I would need to see this. The... the the, the penis is in question. <laughs> no, I need to see the, the schematics of this. You, you need to see the penis is in question? I need to see you the penis is in question. I'm gonna you, wanna, need... you, wanna, you, you wanna look at other men's cocks? Or my own. I, well, just, I, I just need a plethysmograph. How do you spell this? But no, I'm just... I don't know how to spell that. Uh, it's P-L-E-T-H-Y-S-M-O-G-R-A-F. H. So an instrument for recording and measuring variation in the volume of a part of the body. So this is not used just is not just for wieners. They just now the, the it's an obvious it's an obvious uh, application of the technology though. Right. Yeah. You can yeah you can put it but no I'll bet if you look at the schematics of that you would find that it is probably just quite rare because there's no way it was a hundred percent otherwise like that would definitely but, yeah, be yeah. there's like there's yeah there's there's the occasional bisexual guy i'm not seeing you know, i forgot what the sample size on this one i don't think it was that big How but the idea, that just, uh, the idea is that just the idea is that bisexuality in men is just very very rare in women it's very common in in men it's like almost non-existent i'm i'm searching on alibaba right now for a post this to graph <laughs> wait alibaba the uh the the Chinese site, this, yeah. So you can buy anything on, yeah. Um, oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. Boom. Well, the found, problem is, boom, boom, boom. Found one. Fourteen to eighteen dollars oh, per unit. You, minimum hundred uh hundred units. Uh, this one, no, no. I can get one nine to eighteen dollars, one unit minimum order. But it's only one you can oh, put okay. on your finger. Which means you could probably put it on your wiener. No, you can. I do. I can't. Oh yeah, you and your giant penis, huh? Um, <laughs> I'm Italian. You're Irish. That's how it works. Listen, I'll bet you probably couldn't even fit one of these on your finger. How's that, butthole? Uh, <laughs> are you gonna order it? No, I'm not gonna fucking order anything from Alibaba. Um, uh, you're, you're gonna be yeah. You gotta be a patriot. Gotta gotta order from Amazon. What's Baba fucking? Uh... Yeah, fucking uh... Alibaba. Uh... You can probably up, find up two point four too. up two point four percent today. Yeah, it's apparently like way more common of a device than I thought. I just didn't know what it was called. Um. Yeah, if anybody's well, looking for any I tips, it was in the... I would say fucking. Well, the first time I ever. Go ahead. First Go time ahead. I ever heard of it was in the penis, Sonny. 
Yeah. I mean, that's the first time I've ever heard the name. I've seen one of those things, though. If you look up what it is, it's just like, you know, you go to the doctor's office, they put that thing on your finger. Um, yeah. That's what that, that's all it is. Uh, yes. But yeah, no, anybody looking for any, any tips on some fucking longs, I would say, uh, like, if you look at Alibaba, not a fucking bad, uh, not a bad thing. Probably not going anywhere for a while. Well, I don't know. Yeah. We don't know that. Again, I am not a financial professional. This advice should not be taken. And blah 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 about fucking past performance of stocks does not indicate future gains. He's he's not a financial professional. He's barely a professional. I well, I'm not a fucking professional anything anymore. I resigned from my position at my job, um, which I'm really excited about. I was moving anyway, you know. Yeah. But, Congratulations uh, on that, and I, and I mean that in the utmost sincerity. But what was what was what finally got you to do it? Zoom calls. I, I just, I, I, there was one of them, especially I didn't want to go on. And I was just like, yeah, I just texted my boss. I was like, uh, dude, I, 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 I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I, I, I quit. It was like, all right, well, I, I hate to see you go, but you know, I'll, I'll give you a call, uh, after the zoom call and then, uh, send him my letter of resignation. And then there you go. Um, although today this was funny. I got a fucking phone call. I assume was about work because somebody called. Uh, and then called back right away, but I checked the voicemail and the voicemail was hello. Well, like anybody answers the phone, like, you know, what, like, like a voicemail person, like anybody answers the phone is just like, you have reached the voicemail box of two, one, three. And then, you know, I, 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 that's how I answer the phone. You're going to say hello after that. Not going to identify yourself. Not going to, you know, no, no, no. say what you're calling about. No, no, no. It seemed like it seemed to me like he thought I had picked up the phone. Hello. Oh, like that's about the dumbest oh. bullshit in the entire. Hello. What the fuck do you mean? Hello. You know, and then calls so, back. So we're talking. So, we're talking someone whose uh, social skills and ability to use a phone has atrophied so much that they can't tell a voicemail apart from uh, an actual live person. Uh, fucking apparently. I mean, I want to call this guy back and just be like, hello, hello, hello. Fucking idiot. Like, I, I just couldn't believe it. I was laughing this morning, fucking, because I was asleep still. And, like, I, I just like, ah, I woke up, phone call, fucking turn that shit off. I don't work there anymore. And then calls right back, and I'm just like, fucking tell Erica, I'm just like, this is fucking ridiculous. Look at that. That's, I'm so glad I don't have to deal with that shit anymore. They call right back immediately, you know, and then check the voicemail. And that's what I find. And it's like, holy shit. I'm glad I don't work there anymore. Hmm, well, congratulations. Uh, you know, it's also, you know, congratulations on the move. You're moving on up in the world. I'm moving somewhere, I guess, but you know, that's, I'm just, yeah. I mean, I, I you know, I could have been smart and waited it out another couple of weeks or whatever. And, you know, made a few more pennies, but it's like, fuck that. <laughs> I just, I can't do it anymore. Yeah, yeah, panic. It's not, not worth it, you know. Yeah. Like, if it was like a few thousand bucks, I imagine it would have been worth it, but not pennies. I mean, it would have been a couple thousand dollars worth, um, potentially. It was at least a thousand dollars. I don't know. for Yeah, but it's, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't worth fucking, not that, you know, a thousand dollars of pennies or whatever, but I mean, it's just like, not, it, not worth it. For the hell I was going to have to go through. Yeah, the 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 Zoom revolution and its consequences has been a disaster for the telecommuting race. Oh my god, dude! I mean, it was just like how many fucking Zoom calls do I need to be on? I mean, we were doing like fucking ridiculous numbers of these calls. You know, not only the shit that I would have to fucking like get with clients on, you know, which is I didn't mind doing that. That's fine. I don't mind doing Zoom calls with clients, but just like this is like management. You know, just dumb Zoom calls. So management, like, can avoid being laid can, off. You know, can can justify their continued employment. Yes, you know, and it's just like all of them were always about how we could be more productive and sell more shit. And it's like I have an idea, maybe less of this shit. You know, but it was it was of the utmost importance that we were there uh, for these things. And it's like you just I was work. I was like I would just fucking turn it on. No camera on, no microphone on, fucking ignore it. And then I was, like, actually getting work done through the entire time. But it's like, oh, my God. It's like, I just couldn't deal with another one of these fucking things. You mean, like, you know, like the kids who are, you know, being forced to use Zoom to uh, attend classes and they're just playing video games during it? Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, 
just uh, it was it was bad. It just it came it became too much. I mean, you know, you're getting like, you know, you do two of those in a day, and it's like, how the fuck am I supposed to get any work done? You know, utterly I don't, I don't, I don't pointless. You know, it's like I, I I've been reading up on the methods that like these kids have been using to get around like Zoom calls and shit because uh, uh, with Zoom, uh, or at least the, the way the teachers are using it, like they can actually see like what you have open on the screen. Sure. So you know. If you try and tab out to like, I don't know, play video games or whatever, they can catch you. But what these kids have been doing is like they'll create a uh, they'll create a looped video of themselves, like looking into the camera or looking like they're working. They'll just run that using some uh, driver software, and then they'll just play games on their PS4 or whatever. That's yeah. I mean, I, I don't know why anybody thought that that was gonna work. These kids definitely are gonna be smarter than some fucking retard teachers when it comes to shit like this. You know. Yeah, yeah, same thing. Like uh, Andy Nowicki, who's going to be our guest uh, next week. He was supposed to be on this week, but uh, we delayed the publication of his book Under the Nihil by a week due to uh, unforeseen circumstances. Uh, he did a video of his kids where they were talking about that, and you know, his kids were talking about, oh, they're expecting us to wear our uniforms on on Zoom calls, what? but like we're not doing it. And no one else is. Oh yeah, apparently they go to a school that requires uniforms, and uh, the the administration was like, you got to wear your uniforms on the Zoom calls. It's like, and, and, and Andy Nowicki's son was like, we're not doing that. Like, what are they going to do to us if we don't? Yeah, that's, that's fucking dumb. I mean, we had the whole, you know, they were like, the, uh, the way they put it, they were like dressed professionally, you know, but like nobody expected suits and ties and stuff. It was basically like, please wear a shirt. <laughs> is what it was it was like please wear a shirt please please don't please don't flash us please don't start jerking off on the call yeah please don't do a please don't do a seek hail right you know it's just like you know maybe uh you know maybe you wear a shirt which is fine i understand that i understand you want to put in their dress professionally which is like you know it, but nobody was expecting a suit and tie or anything on those calls or anything like that but um they it was funny they tried to like uh do the camera thing um with people for a while and like you know everybody should turn on their cameras and stuff and then just nobody did it um because like i was never gonna do that <laughs> not a chance in the world what am i supposed to do like uh you're not, you're not gonna get me to turn my camera on on a zoom call because i don't have a camera so you know sucks to be you well the pro i mean the problem with my not you not you personally the royal you right yeah i mean you know i am royal but uh the, the the, 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 like the big thing that would you know would have been weird for me is like everybody else has like shitty laptop cameras and then I would turn mine on and I have a 4K camera with a green screen behind me and that somebody would have asked questions and I would have been like oh I own these things for no reason at all. <laughs> you know? I'm actually a fa I'm actually a famous video game streamer. You may have heard of me. My name is PewDiePie. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm Ninja. Uh, be great to do a ninja parody, but instead of ninja, it's uh, the other one. <laughs> uh, I'm not. I'm not a giant fan of Zoom myself. I've only used it a few times. Uh, I've, I've you know, Luke Ford uses it for his streams, so whenever I've been on his streams, I have to use Zoom. And Halsey uses it as well, so I, you know, I'm, I use it whenever I'm on Halsey's show. But like, I, 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 I don't really get it. Um, I don't see the, the only idea. advantage. It well, I, it's 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 at least faster running than Skype. I'll give it that. Skype has become really unwieldy over the uh, the past few years, uh, and I think it also allows more people to uh, to connect to a call. But aside from that, it seems like a really opaque, opaque, shitty piece of software. Well, I mean, I know it allows more people to connect to a call, and that's fine. But it's like, why would you need that many people on a podcast? I don't understand why people don't just use Google Hangouts. I had to use Skype last night. Um, I was on uh, Joe Pritch's new podcast. Uh, it was called Just Joe Radio, I think. Um, but uh, and I was terrible on that. Like I was just real low energy. Um, but uh, you know he's a great guy. I've known Joe for um, uh, a guy, an okay number of years. He's a good guy. Uh, glad to see him getting into the podcast realm and stuff. But um, uh, like we had to use Skype, and it was like this is awful, you know? So I really don't get the appeal of zoom because like, why would you need that many people on a podcast? If you have more than two people on a podcast, the chances of, of everyone talking over each other, unless they know each other really well, goes up from 5% to a thousand percent. Yeah. Plus like not everyone's going to get like a whole lot of time. Like the more people you have on a, on a show like that, uh, the less time everyone gets to kind of like say anything valuable. 
Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't want to do this. Uh, and, uh, you know, like Joe's podcast was the first podcast that's not a project of mine that I've been on in a really long time. Like, I don't do that shit anymore. I don't go on other people's podcasts. Um, I've been asked and said, no, thank you several times. Like, I don't I just don't do that shit anymore. Um, really? You're, you're retiring. You're fading off the Internet. No, fuck no. I do my own projects. I don't do other people's projects. They want to talk to me. They can come on my shit that I control. Okay. What? It's just like I mean, well, I guess besides the weekly sweat. I mean, that's fine, but those those are just the bros. I don't fucking mind that so much. But like I'm just talking like different random people's fucking podcasts of like I started a well, podcast. Well that's fair. That's fair. Oh, I mean, you mean technically you are Well, I mean, you're technically on someone else's project right now, but Yeah, but not the same thing. Not the same thing at all. I like. I'm. You're, you're not. You're not. You're not answering calls from randos anymore. Right. Yeah. I don't just go on fucking. I, like, if you're listening to this and you're starting a podcast, you should just have Matt come on because I'm never gonna fucking come on your dumb podcast ever. <laughs> like ever. I'm never coming on your podcast because I don't know you. Um, you got to be a real good friend for me to fucking spend the fucking time and energy to go on your dumb shit. Plus, well, like, you know, Brian's not that popular, so why do you want to have him on anyway? I am not that popular anymore. I mean, he's, you know, I mean, I always assume that, like, if it's just some random... How's your D-Light like, you know, like followership going, though? Uh, it's going up, uh, like, Is about, that... it's about, about 260 mm, people. So you're, you're probably yeah. right away from, from getting, you know, yeah. So, yeah, I'm not popular, you're right, though. It's fine. No, the point, the point, the point I'm making is like the, the the reason why a rando wants to have you or anyone else on their podcast, someone they don't know, is just so they can you know get publicity. Yeah. You know, uh, and if if that's the case, you know, why would you not? Why would anyone ask you? Because you're not that popular. Well, you have an audience, obviously, but like, like you don't have much of a public presence. Right I'm now. a I'm a legend, sir. I'm an enigma. I am I am I am whispered in the halls of online racism. A name from long ago. Brian, Brian, Brian. Yeah, Brian. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you know, you're you're famous among some Antifa retards. Yeah. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm surprised they haven't found the D Live yet. Yeah, they probably um I can't, I can't even find something funny to say here. You know, just oh, I'm shocked. Yeah, I'm, usually, I I, I'm shocked. You're usually so quick witted and hilarious. It is a shock that they haven't found it. <laughs> I do follow your YouTube obsessively though, and downvote everything. Yeah, I love that. That's funny. I mean, all I've been uploading to the YouTube is just sketches. I got a new one. I got to fucking do. Um, I got a I got a good one that I got to do. Um, but I just, it's going to be annoying to fucking actually do it. Cause I'm going to have to actually edit the damn thing and I don't fucking like doing that shit. Um, but yeah, I like just, I, that, I want to get that fucking YouTube just fucking banned eventually. I don't see the point in having it anymore at this point. Like it's, um, what happens to your fucking Google account if your YouTube gets banned? Uh, well, I have experience with this because my YouTube was banned and, um, in this case, uh, my YouTube was banned, and my entire Google account was shut down. Oof. Uh, but I was able to appeal to get uh, both of those back up. But I think uh, in some cases, like they'll ban your YouTube, but you won't. You know, they won't ban anything else if you're on your Google account. So like, you'll still have Google Hangouts, Gmail, all that shit. But if you go to YouTube, like you just can't use it. Huh. Yeah. So maybe I just shouldn't risk it and shouldn't get it banned. Um, yeah. You could, always just delete, you could always just delete it. What my my YouTube account? I guess, yeah, but that's not how I go. I mean, the implication the implication here is that you don't want one anymore. Yeah, uh, but that, so like, that's not the way I go out, man. That's never the way I go out. Well, uh, as a suggestion, you may want to form another uh, YouTube slash Gmail account so you can watch YouTube videos, and then you can get this one banned. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's just I don't know, whatever. I don't use that YouTube account anymore. I mean, uploading the little sketches and stuff is fun. Oh, that's just a, you know, whatever. But, like, that thing's been inactive for so long. Um, it, uh, yeah. Yeah, never, uh, I don't know. Fuck YouTube. I don't know why anybody would use YouTube. I know people are mad at DLive now. Understandably, because of that whole um, uh, DLive taking a uh, 
way bigger cut from 9% to 25% um, of these donations. But like, I, I understand why people are mad about that. Because a lot of people like switch from Twitch and stuff like that. But also, dude, why would you expect to like make a, a an honest living off of a website that you don't own and operate? You know, I'm sorry, that's on you. Like, that's the thing about internet money is it's fucking fleeting. Man, it's particularly now with audience taste changing every three months. Yeah, you know, it's like. I mean, I, I like what I do over on DLive, honestly. I think it's I think it's great. Sometimes we play some video games. Sometimes we just fucking make fun of YouTube videos, watch dirt bike videos paired up with dubstep. You know, that's fun. Me yeah. and the boys, we fucking hang out, and uh, it's fun. You know, I get a modest fucking viewership, and, and you know, we just we do good shit. Uh, it's fun. You know, it's fun. But, you know, I, I, I don't understand why you'd be like, oh, yeah, this is going to be my job. Uh, something it's like the people that like had all those fucking Airbnbs, you know, uh, who have been devastated now because now they have like 18 mortgages. It's like, what were you thinking? <laughs> what were you thinking? God, like that shit just pisses me off because like I want to slap these people and go, what the fuck were you thinking? Like that's insert picture of Mao here. No, it's they're not even landlords, dude. They're just rented out all those properties just strictly for Airbnb. It's like, listen, you've got to have fucking. Everything you do, you need a fucking out. You need a plan. They had no plan. They had got 30-year mortgages on 18 properties and just assumed they could do an Airbnb thing forever. And it's like, you don't own or operate that website. Something could happen to it or to your account or this could happen, and then you are fucked. You know, I don't know why anybody thought it was a good plan. I well, It's basically like those people are, this, are like the same people that like, uh, you know, that one guy who like started the fire festival. You know, just yeah. those fuck that type of mentality it, to be uh, a psychopath and stupid is like a d fucking horrible combination. You're just going to fuck yourself up. Well, to be fair, a lot of psychos are stupid, but I get what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, listen, like there's a great book by Kevin Dutton called The Wisdom of Psychopaths um, about how, like, basically all successful people, all the really, really successful people have some of those dials turned up on them. Uh, mainly just like risk taking, but these guys took big risks and I don't know how they didn't see this could go poorly for you at the drop of a hat. I don't see why people walk around spinning all these plates like that. You know, uh, it's, I, I, I'm calling it now by the end of the year, you're going to see a lot of people uh, take a huge interest in trading and so many of them are going to fuck this shit up one because they're young and stupid and they don't you know don't do their due diligence but two because there's a lot of fucking crazy motherfuckers out there that just do not have the ability to think ahead which is funny because they just like talk about low time preference among blacks and then it just seems that they they have no fucking understanding of things i can't understand people who don't know how to fucking manage risk don't understand that like anything you do now is you know, financial decisions, any business decisions, job shit, whatever, is going to potentially fall the fuck apart. You need a safety net. You need a fucking, you know, you need to cushion. I, I, I don't understand it, Matt. I'm glad that those people with fucking 18, I mean, I'm sad that those people are going to default on all their fucking mortgages and they're, you know, in financial ruin. But, like, what kind of a dumb asshole do you have to be to take out 18 motherfucking mortgages, destroy your credit now, uh, and... Like, just assume Airbnb is going to last forever. Like, what if well, you and I hated one of those people and then repeatedly stayed at their Airbnbs under different accounts and left bad ratings until they lost their account? I'm not saying do that, but that's a thing that could be possible if you hated a person. Like, why would anybody do that? And it's, I'm not even joking about 18 mortgages. Go Google some of these fucking, you know, stories that have been uh, popping up. Th 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 those people were ruined. That's not a business model. Owning shit, like, you don't, you don't own the website. Rent those properties would be a better idea, but they just, there you go. Or they, the best ones are the people that fucking uh, took out rental properties and now rents do. They bought, uh, they, they, they fucking signed leases. You know, had they had even less fucking money. They signed all these different leases and were fucking, you know, short subletting them out. They're, they're fucked. Rents fucking do. Well, well I. You know, I'm not. I'm not doubting you. Obviously, I've, I've read a lot of these stories myself. How the fuck does someone take out multiple, you know, uh, rental shit like that? Like, you can rent as many places uh, as you want. As long as you pass. I know, but like, 
doesn't that shit show up on a credit report? Yeah, but some uh, tons of people own and rent multiple properties. As long as your credit's good. Yeah. Plus, you know, who's yeah. to say it has to be? Like, nice like with the, same with like the eighteen mortgages. It seems like it, it, I, well, I, I probably shouldn't even be asking this question, but it, it seems like it should be harder to do shit like that yeah. because of what you just said. It, it can all fall apart like in an instant. I mean, if your credit's good and you've got the fucking money up front for it, then yeah, you know, you can do whatever you want. And I think you should be able to. But like. What a fucking bad fucking decision. You know, it's just. I don't I just I don't I just don't understand why. It, like, why would it never cross someone's mind? Like, oh, I'm completely reliant on this one system of things. You know, the, something I don't own. You don't own Airbnb, so you could easily be fucked. That's going to be all of your income. And then like, I don't know. I mean, I'll bet a lot of those people are young. A lot of the stories were just like young uh, men, and it's like, you know, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Nobody saw this coming, but like, we were already headed towards a recession anyway. Everybody saw that coming, but it's like, give me a fucking break. Break me off a piece of that bullshit bar, dude. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I get you. You know, I mean, I, uh, I, I don't have a whole lot of sympathy for people like that. You know, because you know, like they said, they should have they should have known the risk. I don't have sympathy for the banks either, because they're the ones who signed us, uh, gave the mortgages out. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, like if we even just take mortgages out of the equation, the people that were renting places and the rents. Yeah, I don't yeah. have I don't have sympathy for the for the landlords in that case either. Oh, I have sympathy for the fucking landlords. No, the fuck fucking them. Chad. I was right. Nah, the fucking Chad lords. Whatever rents do, bitch. Chad lords. Mal. Fuck you, Mal lost. Chad Lords. Rents yeah, Mal, do. Mal. Knock, knock, knock. Rents do. Tennessee. And Mal, but Mal built, built a country that is now the world's uh, uh, predominant superpower. So, yeah, like, who was, won in the end? Wait, who's 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 uh, who's really should get the credit for that? Who's uh? uh J Ping or what what the fuck ever the guy who actually opened up the uh Deng Deng Xiaoping. Yeah, Deng Xiaoping. Fucking that's who gets the credit for that. Not fucking Mao. Well oh, Mao got that shit started. <laughs> no, he didn't matter. They all starved. <laughs> who uh Mao oh, was the oh, one Mao who met got with that Nixon. started Mao got that started with like there's people there. Because when it when you live in a fucking bullshit communist country, the only thing you can do is fuck. Because it's free. Uh, Mao was the one who met with Nixon. Who gives a shit? That's literally how this all got started. Listen, listen, buddy. I don't know anything about Chinese history. I'm talking 100% out of my ass. All I'm saying is, rent's due, bitch. <laughs> rent's due? Well, you know, I've got a, um, I've got a gun. Rent's due. Chad Lord's. Landlords. Landlords are parasites. Oh, fucking dumb. Land, you just you jealous. Landlords are fucking smart people. I want to fucking own rental property someday. That's like just a goal. Like when I go on my fucking retirement RV shit. You know, that's I just I gotta own some rental property. Why would you not? Maybe I'll rent out my house. You know, that I that I fucking. On Airbnb. No. I, I don't understand why anybody would want to do the Airbnb thing anyway, because it's like, yeah, cool. Just every week, let people do drugs in your house. You know? <laughs> like, it's just a, it's a silly model. I, I think Airbnb is probably not on its way out, but uh, I, I think we're going to kind of go back to hotels, you know. I think I think it's going to be around. I think the gig economy will be fine because we're you know it's it's going to be we're we're going to be living under digital serfdom. Yeah, but do you think hotels are going away? Hotels aren't going away, but like Airbnb will is not going away either. It'll contract, but it'll still be around. I mean, but as far as people buying up properties to turn into Airbnb rentals, I think it's going to fuck. Yeah, that's not, that's that. Well, that shit's on its way out because like there's already laws against that in a lot of places. Yeah, well, because it drives down the property value of fucking everybody who like honestly went and bought a house. You know. Um, yeah, it drives down the property value and it drives up the price of rent. Like, yeah, it does. Yeah, I, I mean, look, I get fucking called a libertarian all the time, which I think is bullshit. Um, but. 
you know, you got to you got to fucking you got to respect good, honest fucking work. And I don't know. We had this conversation. You said, you know, people don't think like that anymore. And I, I, I agree with you, uh, but they need to get back to it. God help us when all the boomers die, you know, um, when all the boomers die, you're just going to have a bunch of fucking whiny millennial and gen, uh, gen X cunts, you know, like just a whole fucking nation of, uh, 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 who's that fucking so in other words, Sarah in other, McLaughlin. In other words, when, in other words, what happens when, when the boomers die, we'll finally get UBI. No. <laughs> no, you won't. No. <laughs> no. We'll finally, we'll, fi- we'll, fi- we'll, finally get, we'll finally get paid vacation and uh, paid paternity leave. Paid vacation? Okay. Well, here's an interesting thing that I think is probably going to happen that I think is uh, going to be interesting. Although, probably not because most people that I know are too stupid to try to negotiate their salaries in a fucking uh, – in the hiring process. I don't know why. Um, salespeople are great at this, um, but I don't know why most people don't. But um, so wages are going to go the fuck down. Uh, that's just pretty fucking obvious because, you know, we're going to have more unemployment. It's, it would be financially irresponsible for companies not to offer lower wages. That's just, you know, that, that, that it makes sense. That's fair. I understand that. I may not like it, but that's fair and it makes sense. Um, I think people are going to fucking care more about their work life balance. Like, I really do think that people are going to uh, go for, you know, like more vacation time and shit like that um, over higher wages uh, in like the next two years. I think we are kind of seeing a shift in leisure time versus work time because uh, like now everybody at like major companies and stuff like you basically are expected to work all the time. Um I think we're going to see a shift in like it, not any kind of like labor rights thing or whatever, but like this will be our version of it, this half-assed version of it, where we go, yeah, but maybe I want an extra two, three days of vacation a year instead of, you know, uh, an extra few thousand dollars a year. Um, I, plus, plus with Zoom, uh, your bosses will be able to uh, harass you twenty-four-seven. Well, they can already. So it's do a great that. deal for them too. They can already do that because of cell phones, but. That's another thing. I mean, 100% offices are going to get smaller. We're going to see more people, you know, working from home. Uh, the problem with that is they're going to, uh, a lot of companies, I'm sure, are going to require you to install some type of software on your personal computer uh, instead of providing you with a work computer. Like right now, a lot of those places, uh, when you work from home, they provide you with a, a, a computer. Um, I will not install any fucking piece of bullshit from an employer on my personal computer at all i just won't work at places like that um but you don't want you don't want them to see all the gay porn you've been watching yeah you know the gay porn the trans porn the uh you know matt forney videos all of that gay shit um but you know i mean i i I think definitely uh, like twitter was one of the first people who were like yeah we're probably just gonna have people work from home i mean because you can do it you know you can do it the idea of like going into an office is uh, it's a little archaic really if you think about it um everybody does have the ability to work from home now not everybody likes working from home and some people don't have a home that is you know conducive to working there uh, like they got kids and all of that shit. They can't get any fucking thing done. Some people just hate their families and want to go to the office. So there'll still be offices, but I think that the option to work from home will be um, more readily available. And the way that I look we'll see, at we'll, it is we'll like, see employer, we'll see employers offering like vouchers for co-working spaces. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, you'll, you'll, I think you'll see more of that because that one, you know, you're going to, we're not going to have as big of office spaces. Um, you know, like we work failed. But I think that you probably will see a lot more of that type of thing um, uh, with, with, you What's know. What's WeWork? WeWork was <laughs> a terrible company everybody believed in uh, that expanded super quickly uh, and failed ultimately. Um, that was you could come and rent, um, you know, you just like rented office spaces. So it, like they would just lease office spaces short term. Uh, and it was like communal working places. It was mainly for, uh, you know, like if you wanted to come and like uh, work on your movie or, you know, software development or whatever shit like that. Um, it that did... sounds retarded. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it yeah, it failed. It failed miserably. Everybody believed in it. It expanded super huge and then uh, it failed miserably. 
Uh, and the CEO was some fucking, uh, the founder and CEO was like some fucking hippie. They replaced him. Eventually it still went under. Um, a lot of people lost a lot of money on WeWork, but, um, which was funny. I used to see those buildings everywhere. Um, there was like two of them in LA that I would see all the fucking time. Uh, and yeah, that shit's not there anymore. Uh, no, I think I remember this. I think I saw that shit around Chicago when I was living there. It was everywhere. It was everywhere. And they even they even ex- uh, wanted to expand into We Live, and like do fucking oh, yeah no. yeah do like fucking short term apartment shit. Like I mean, it was like it was a very it was a very uh, bold plan, a very bold idea. But it just it obviously didn't fucking you know, work out because it's kind of dumb. Future future plans included We Party, which included t- which involved turning uh, abandoned warehouses into a short term nightclub. Uh, yeah, We Gay, um, which was you know the most successful part of it. Uh, you know <laughs> who doesn't like whippets, right? Short term cruise new spots. <laughs> we War, uh, only location opened in Iraq, and uh, oddly enough. Bought by Halliburton right away. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, I don't know. I mean, the whole thing is just silly to me. But I mean, I'm interested to see where, uh, like, what this uh, whole fucking piece of shit thing is going to do for um, you know people working from home. Because I mean, I'm an advocate of working from home. I I have been working from home for you know about two and a half years now, and that just at this one job i've worked from home for oh geez several years i mean like uh just you know outside of like going and meeting clients and stuff like there's not really much of a reason to go into the office if you're in sales you go a couple times a week because you got shit you got to do you got meetings you got fucking all of that but it's like that can all be handled now you know i think people were fine this was the test of like can you actually trust your employees to work from home and it's like you pretty much can you know, like people are willing to just sit and work from home and, and they're happier working from home. Yeah, no more, no more forced uh, banter with the coworkers. Yeah. you know, uh, you're surrounded in your own space, you know, you can, you know, go to a, go to the fridge and, you know, eat whenever you want, piss whenever you want. Well, I mean, I've never worked in a place. Well, I guess I have, but uh, not in my adult life and my adult, my big boy sales career worked in a place where I couldn't eat and piss when I wanted. Um, but, you know, it's nice to not wear shoes. <laughs> you know, I think in the past, since, since March, I think I've put on shoes like five times. <laughs> yeah, I've worked from home for about six years now. And I, I don't know how I could ever go back to working in a workplace of any kind. I mean, uh, part, well, part of me misses the office just because I miss, um, you know, like putting on the suit and tie and, and like, you know, sitting at a computer and um, I, it, the sounds of a fucking office and, you know, all of that. Like, um, I miss, I, you know what I really miss? The copiers. I, I don't miss any of that shit. I just really like copiers. I'm fucking really like, that's, you know. You know, like autism people just, really just buy, are. Buy a, buy a copier. Then. What do you mean, buy a copier? You know, they're like, oh yeah, let me just dump fourteen thousand dollars into a copier machine that I fucking just what for for me to sit there and be like, oh yeah, this is the fucking Toshiba. I mean, give me a break. No, I'm not gonna spend fourteen thousand dollars on a fucking copier. The toner on that thing they're alone. Not, they're not. They're not on that. They're not. Uh, they're not that expensive, are they? Are you fucking kidding me? Yes, they are. Well, you can't get one of those, like, uh, you know, less expensive hybrids. Why would... I, no, that's not a thing. What do you mean hybrid? Solar-powered copier? Oh, dude, that's a million-dollar idea. <laughs> now, I'm talking about, like, the... They, they, they've been selling this shit for, like, commercial... Uh, for in a personal use for, like, a decade. I used to own one of those. It's not a the same. Printer. Oh, you want... Oh, you want, like, the, the sound of, like, the industrial copier. Well, it's not an industrial copier. It's just an office copier. It's, like, a big thing, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. And, indu- I mean, they do have, like, uh, uh, production printers. Production printers are amazing. They're fucking... They're the size of your house. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, they're not that big, but they're very long, and they're awesome, and, like, that's what they... I mean, you know, that's what they print books on. 
you know yes um production printers are fucking incredible that's a completely different league i've never sold production printers before um i would love to though uh just because i think they're so fascinating i love i love fucking copiers like i I, they're so cool um yeah and those are not going away though because like if we're ever gonna have offices you need one there because they do more than that um you know it's like it is the hub of the fucking office like it's they're storing and sending files and like oh there's so much stuff and all the copier companies basically do work for a production software at this point which is fucking incredible too i'd love that um i i whatever i'm nerd now i do this on the d live every now and then when i get real drunk but like i i fucking love workflow optimization and copiers like that's like that's my my, my whole fucking digs dude i fucking love that stuff like autistic people some of them like trains or you know air raid silence or whatever i love copiers <laughs> i just love them mm-hmm. you know let's go to a kinko's and get that uh get that for a lot of the kinkos and shit uh they just have really old ones i like watching like the new fucking product display uh product fucking premiere shit on youtube or whatever um you know like i mean konica minolta is a company that's been around since like 1617 well it was con it was minolta first back in like 1617 if i remember uh it's either konica or minolta i forget one of them was a uh a camera company the other one just did like uh like printing like old school printing back in fucking japan or whatever um and then you know it, they, they merged at some point or whatever and like they're kind of a business leader well i mean obviously xerox uh i mean you basically have the big ones you got like conic minolta <laughs> xerox canon um and then like you know when you get down the line you get stuff like brother and stuff like that but um yeah i fucking love copiers whatever dude i'm, I'm spazzing out uh, I fucking love copiers. I think it's like some of the best shit in the entire world. They're really interesting when you get into them, and like how they work and all this shit. It's fucking crazy. We need to make a video game about copiers, dude. Copier repair simulator. I would totally fucking play that. It's, it's, it sounds it sounds like an interesting idea. I mean, you know, you've got drug dealer simulator, thief simulator, you know. Train renovation, sta- train station renovation simulator. Well, there's, there's tank repair simulator. There's uh. Uh, uh, P- uh, PC Builder Simulator, which I keep meaning to get. Um, cooking Simulator that, is fun. Now that is fucking meta. PC Builder Simulator. Oh, it looks cool, but it's like it's never dropped below fourteen bucks. And like, I know it's something that I would just play for about like twenty minutes. Like, I did fucking Cooking Simulator. All I did was show up and just like put the fucking fire extinguisher, uh, or put the fucking propane tank on the stove and blow it up, and was like, <laughs> and I have not touched that shit since then. Yeah, I got that on my wish list since you mentioned it. I have to add PC Builder Simulator to it as well, assuming my computer can run it. I mean, it's the same thing. If you can run Cooking Simulator, you can run PC Building Simulator. Hmm. Yeah, hey, cool. I'll, 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 I'll look into it. It looks fun. I mean, it's just, I don't know, the simulator. There's like car repair simulator and shit. Why not copy a repair simulator? Do it. I, you know. I, I, I imagine I imagine they'd like expand a, like office repair simulator. You know, and copiers would just be part of it. Well, what else are you going to repair in an office? Oh, shit. You know what? I think we should say this since um, uh, we, we were talking about kind of like, you know, offices shrinking and stuff like that. Um, I think a big thing that we're going to find is that um, the job of office manager or office administrator or any of that shit is a fucking st- – I've always thought it was a stupid job. It's all – it's it's a stupid fucking job. Those people are getting fucking laid off for good. Also – HR was already in the decline anyway, because if you've got a company- oh yeah oh oh good good point. Uh, I shared this with you like uh, yesterday. It's like uh, of the uh, unemployment claims that have been you know uh, you know jobs lost that have been analyzed so far, fifty five percent of people who've lost their jobs women. Yeah, and that's usually what your HR department is, which is weird. People go to school for for HR, um, and that's good. Fucking dudes rock. Um, dudes rock twenty twenty. Fuck yeah, dude. But. You know, like HR, think about this. If we're especially for doing the telecommuting thing, um, you could have one small HR team for your national company. You know, you don't need an HR rep in every fucking office, especially if we get rid of offices. But that was already shrinking anyway and becoming a thing. But this is HR is a dead fucking thing. HR will just be a fucking email. You know, you'll never meet just, these fucking just, people. Just, just outsource it to some chicks in the Philippines. 
No, I mean, you know, no, I don't think they're going to do that because you still need a degree for this, you know. But uh, I don't know why you need a degree for it. It's like, but whatever. I mean, there's probably more to it than I know. I, I've never worked in HR, obviously, but I've always fucking HR has always been the silliest job to me. I mean, they're just the nice person you say bye to when you leave the office. You know, it's like I, I've never had an HR incident or anything like that. Never they're had the, to go they're to the HR. Person who talks, they're the person who talks to you when you whip your dick out. Yeah, you know, which I've never done. Like, it's, I've, you know, been to the office drunk and talked to HR just because it's like we're having lunch together, you know? <laughs> like, that's the closest. I've never had a fucking HR thing. But th I understand they are necessary. The reason that they're necessary is to keep the company from being fucking sued. But you can totally just get a small department based out of fucking, I don't know, Utah. So just whatever. It's fucking 10 people running an entire fucking country's HR. How many HR complaints do you think you really get? You know, it's like it, most of them can be handled with just, okay, fine. Because most of them are bullshit. So they answer the email and they go, okay, thank you. We'll look into it. Look into it by going, what do you think happened? You just call a manager and you go, what happened here? And they go, I don't know. They're mad at each other. And then that's fucking it. It's done. You know, I'm sure there's more to it than that. But like, I think HR is going to fucking shrink down. Uh, office administrator positions are going to fucking be gone. I mean, I, I think it'll be great when companies have less offices. You know, I, th I honestly, I think that's a good fucking thing. Or like, it, I mean, it sucks for pro or like, you know, property owners and stuff, but maybe we'll turn those things into, I don't know, like uh, pot shops or something. I, I, don't I mean, know. it sucks for landlords. Yeah, I mean, it does. It does. I guess it would suck for landlords. Um, but like, maybe, I mean, they'll rent them out to somebody else. Like, how weird would it be if office parks just became like, you know, pot fucking parks. And it's just like you can just go buy pot all over the fucking place there, and not from drug they dealers. Be, you know, they could probably convert some of them to like I don't know apartments or something, turn yeah. them into like little mini mini villages. Yeah, I mean, you could do something with it. You know, I mean, the people that aren't innovative are gonna fucking die for sure. But like, um, you know, I I think it's a good thing. I, I think ultimately it's a good thing because I, I think working from home is a good fucking thing. I think more people should be allowed to do it. I think people workers would be happier to do it. it, it, it it's nice that it took like a pandemic, a uh, phony pandemic, to kind of get boomers to recognize the value of working from home because they're the ones who are obsessed with everyone showing up in the office because yeah. they're fucking control freaks. Yeah. I mean, yeah. How can I make sure you're working if I can't watch you? That's something that always cracks me up. I've told, uh, uh, especially my last boss, I fucking told him that, they, you know, they'd be uh, obsessed with uh, activity metrics. And I'm like, I mean, I never had this problem because he, you know, he was like, okay, I, it, all my activity metrics are always good. But because I actually fucking work. I'm a big fucking prospector. You know, if you're not looking for a new business while you're fucking doing your, your current business, then like you're not going to have a next month, you know. But um you know, it's like, if you're so obsessed with fucking activity metrics, just, uh, I don't know, don't hire people that don't work. Fire people that don't work. I think it's a pretty simple thing, you know? Don't hire people yeah, yeah, that you think yeah. aren't going to work. Yeah, it's, it goes back to the fucking, you know, boomer mentality. Like, How am I going to know you're working if I can't watch you? Like, I don't know, if I don't turn in any work, then you'll know I'm not working? Yeah, I mean, it's like, dude, that's 100%, you know? And it's like, I honestly, I do less work in an office environment. Like, I'm more apt to just sit on my phone. Because I, I feel like I'm getting one over on the fucking man. You know? Oh, Christ, yeah. Like, years ago, like, my one of my first jobs, I, I was in an office. And I was blatantly hired as part of a... I, I worked for the Civil Service. Diversity program because blatantly... you're gay? No, I was blatantly <laughs> hired because... I was blatantly hired because they had a surplus in the budget. And, you know, how government agencies work. If they refuse the money, they'll never get it back. Right. So, they hired me. So I spent most of the day fucking blogging on the internet. Uh, I didn't have a, a you know smartphone back then, but like yeah, uh, I'm more productive at the at, at home because like I can actually focus. You know, I I can spend the amount of time I need to get the work done and then do all the things. Whereas like I'm not I'm not chained to an office for eight hours, even though I only have three hours of work. Well, yeah, and the thing is too. I mean, what I what I always find myself doing is like. Um... You know, and maybe this is goes against the work life balance thing, but I mean, just from a you know personal anecdotal perspective here, it's like, um, yeah, I mean, I have big, I, I would have big swaths of time, uh, like three, three and a half hours or whatever, where like I wasn't fucking working, I was dicking around on the internet, but I was also fucking you know working at eight thirty at night, 
you know, just it was like, oh, I got to get some shit done. I got to blah, blah, blah. So it's just I was able to do things on my own pace and on my own time and all of it got done. You know, um, it all gets done. It's just on my own fucking pacing. Uh, I think that like the whole nine to five, really what it is, it's eight to six now, um, is, uh, yeah, I, again, I mean, not to sound like I just learned this word, but archaic. You know, I think it's just kind of a dumb thing. You know, like Monday, Monday through Friday, for the most part, I get it. That's the company's time. That's fine. You know, but like I might not want to fucking lay heavily into a bunch of work on a, you know, Tuesday. But I will make up for that with huge production on a, on a Thursday or Friday. But if you lock people into an office, um, at least for me, you know, again, anecdotal, at least for me, um, it's not it's not a, a structure in which I'm going to get the the most done for me or the company. And like the job I just left was 100 percent commission. All right. Every fucking dollar I got was something I earned myself. You know, and so it was like I obviously put in the fucking work because I made a fucking living doing it. I mean, an OK living doing it, you know, 100 percent commission. So it's like, you know, d d d get off my back, you know, leave me alone. I will get things done. Um, the the, 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 the trade off, by the way, for anybody who's trying to get into sales, the trade off for uh, not taking a salary is having way bigger commissions um, you've got to really trust yourself. If you are just trying to get into sales, take the salary, you know, go, go get a job with a fucking salary first. Cause you're not going to make fucking shit. Um, we're, we're really right, uh, don't, don't go to commissions until like, you've got like some experience. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've been doing sales for, uh, a fucking decade, you know? Um, so like, I'm, I'm good. Like I'm, I'm confident I could fucking sell anything, but you know, you gotta, you know, it's I don't know I don't know I mean the freedom that comes with that type of position as well is pretty good but I think that that freedom is going to be extended to a lot more um you know positions like I mean like kind of administrative positions and stuff like that pretty soon yeah we're we're looking at a we're looking at a brave new world uh oh yeah no 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 we have been looking at a brave new world for a long time R.I.P. Huxley um for way too long. Orgy porgy, bitch. There's a literary reference for you kids. Yeah. See, I've read I have read books. This is the second book I've referenced today. I've referenced the Kevin Dutton book. I've referenced the Audie's uh, 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 Huxley book. I've, I'm referencing books. What is going on? You're a real intellectual, Bryden. I know. Has anybody ever read Harry Potter? Huh? That's a real fucking thinker for you. I've never You're read practically the white Cornell West. I, I love Cornell West. He's not. He's not terrible. He's hilarious, dude. Um, you know. Also, I liked uh, after nine eleven, he called all the people in the uh, in the building little Eichmann. That wasn't him. That was that, oh, was that other dude, oh, okay. Ward Churchill. Oh, okay. the guy yeah, who yeah, yeah, pretended yeah. to be Indian. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, never mind. I'm wrong. Wow. Yeah, he would probably be mad that I credited that to him. He probably doesn't even believe that. I thought it was a little off uh, brand for him, but. Figured he was younger then. I uh, at Charlottesville, I saw Cornell West, and I I, I was yeah. like, oh fuck, this is probably not the time to go say I'm a big fan. <laughs> I loved you in the Matrix Revolution. Right? <laughs> no, I saw him, and I'm like, fuck, I wish I could go talk to him, you know. But because uh, I mean, I do like Cornell West. I think he's funny when he goes on the news shows or whatever. He's pretty funny. He's got do I I don't know what it is about those teeth. Uh, I call I, I okay. Don't ever repeat this. And it's a terrible thing. And I don't actually do this at all. Call them watermelon teeth. You know the big gap. It's for spitting seeds. You know. Um. Uh, it's terrible. Don't ever do that. I'm a comedian. Please. <laughs> yeah. Don't call them watermelon teeth. You know, cause for spitting seeds. That big gap, I don't know why um, black folks have that a lot more than anybody else. I mean, obviously, it's just some, like, genetic thing. But, um, you know, Stacey Abrams has it. Uh, just the, the, the fucking, that gap between the front teeth is weird. It might just be a you know, lack of proper dental care, you know, because braces are expensive. Yeah. Yeah, actually, that's a really good fucking, that's, yeah. Because, um, yeah, no, you're right. 
Yeah. Braces are crazy expensive. Like, fucking plus they're, expensive. Plus, they're a pain in the ass. They fucking hurt. Oh, yeah. I, heard, I never had to have braces, thank God. Um, But, yeah, I mean, obviously, I knew a bunch of kids that did. But, yeah, that's that's probably fucking true, huh? It's just... Also, even, if, also even if you get braces, I think you have to wear a retainer for the rest of your life. Otherwise, to go back to their original shape. Wow. Really? I didn't know that. Huh. Which kind of makes the whole thing pointless, in my yeah. opinion. Shit. Black people... Stay winning with fucking smart business decisions there. Holy shit. Yeah, fuck that. You got gap teeth, you got gap teeth. Fuck you. Yeah, take care of your teeth by brushing them and using two types of mouthwash and flossing them and scraping your tongue. Braces are fucking gay. Well, you got, I mean, if you got those fucking watermelon teeth, then shit, you know, you just save money on floss. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that. If you, you really, if you got braces, you got to fucking wear a retainer the rest of your life. I thought that was just like a thing while your body was developing. Oh no, no, no. Um, you huh. gotta wear, you gotta, you gotta, you, you gotta wear a retainer for the rest of your life because, uh, uh, otherwise, because you know when you're altering the braces, like it's not altering the fundamental bone structure of your jaw. It's right. just moving shit around the gums. Uh, but eventually, it just snaps back to its original position because again, you know the bones. Huh crazy dude i didn't know that wow yeah i mean you're you already blew my mind with the whole braces thing because i like i i just jumped to racist i didn't even fucking think about like the fucking class thing of uh braces you know uh, yeah since you know i don't know if i do since they're you know they're they're elective surgery like they're not covered by uh insurance i believe really that can't be true braces are so common they have to be covered by insurance uh, maybe they are now, but like when I was a kid, like when we were kids, like they weren't. Huh. Crazy town, dude. That's fucking crazy town, USA. That's wild as hell. Yeah. I mean, I now I feel so bad that like for years I've just been like, it's probably just a black people thing that they got teeth like that. But it's like, nope, it's probably just black kids don't get braces as often. Um, So it was a class thing all along. Huh. Wow. Yeah. Look at that. Poverty's the real racist. <laughs> oh you might be excited to hear this i don't know if it's gonna come come into uh, uh being a thing or not but uh, i believe next weekend um mike cannon and i are uh uh he he was recently introduced to the world of podcasting finally uh and he's got the bug so i think we're gonna finally start off center um for those that don't know mike cannon is uh, a friend of mine good guy he happens to be a communist. Um, so we're going to do kind of like a, a chat debate style uh, show of kind of right versus left uh, and call it off. Yeah, Mike, Mike Cannon, yeah, Mike Cannon's an all right guy. Like, does he identify as a specific type of communist or just a generic flavor? Like, I, I anarcho communist, anarcho Marxist, anarcho, you know, Stalinist. I don't think he's any type of anarcho. I don't know. He's talked about Trotsky, but like, I. I, I really have no idea. That's something we'll get into the fucking meat and bones of. Um, Cause I once know. I once got a I once got a Facebook threat from a dude who identified as an anarcho Stalinist. How's that work? Uh, I don't know. All I know is he just messaged me on Facebook. It was like three years ago. He says like, uh, you know, he was threatening to you know, uh, if we see you, you know, you'll end up like baked Alaska's bodyguards. This was after his bodyguards got uh, the shit kicked out of him right uh, and i clicked over to his profile and it was like uh um his political affiliation was listed as anarcho-stalinist i mean i'm pretty sure anarchy and stalinism are diametrically opposed but hey you do you pal well i mean you know not necessarily it could be a hybrid of the two ideologies i mean like i'm not saying it's not a real thing it's just something i haven't heard and i i, I don't understand like anarcho-communist is a thing um but uh you should just call yourself a syndicalist, really. But, um, you know, and the I, fuck I, is I syndicalism, syndicalism, uh, that's um, basically like very small um, uh, uh, groups that trade with each other. Because I guess you could do it like autonomous fucking groups that, uh, you know, different syndicates that, uh, you know, so, are so national other. anarchy, basically. I guess, whatever. I mean, everything, like, every ism and, you know, label. Like, listen, dude, like, I'm a fucking 97 goth, all right? Like, don't fucking put labels on me, man. Like, you know, just fucking, you know, I'm going to listen to fucking, I don't know what bands were popular. Sugar Ray? No, that was early 2000s. Um, was I, I, Listen, I'm going to listen to Smashing Pumpkins and just, like, smoke pot and just don't fucking label me, man. 
But yeah, I mean, I think any like dumb labels, putting a label on your ideology is kind of fucking stupid. I mean, I, I understand labels are necessary and they allow us to like identify shit and everybody wants to put a label on shit. But like, um, you know, it's like there's what, what the when was the oh, you know, it'd be a good book name. All right. For all of your aspiring writers, the death of nuance. Huh? That's a good one. Yeah. It's a good one. The no, it's so nuance. pop. It's so pompous, dude. The death of nuance. <laughs> by uh, dave rubin yeah yes 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 the death of nuance by dave rubin <laughs> oh. forward by jordan peterson right oh fuck oh yeah dude fuck yeah man hell yeah i'd be all right with that that'd be fucking amazing like think uh, there's nothing more pompous than that the death of nuance i'm so above it all <laughs> Oh, uh, I mean, but you know, I hate like all these fucking people just fucking, you know, like, you know, people go crazy with these fucking ideas all the time. And it's like, hey, you just got, you know, take a step back. Take a step back for a second. Take a calm step down. back by Jordan Peterson. I don't know, calm down. By, uh, I could I could write a book called Calm the Fuck Down. I think I, I think that would be on brand for, you know, my my empire. Calm the fuck down by Brighton Proctor. And the whole thing is just like, listen, you're not very important. Now, anyway, I couldn't fill the rest of these pages, so I just copied and pasted a bunch of Nietzsche. I don't even know which one. Here you go. I'll sell that shit on Amazon. I'll just put quote. I'll just put it. I'll just put it uh, fucking quotation marks around it. The whole thing will just be quote blocks. <laughs> 350 pages of just quote block shit. That way they could be like plagiarism. I'm like, no, 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 no. I, I told you, I that's just, you know, what's in the book? Oh, I have no idea. I got bored with him really quickly. Uh, I just copied and pasted. 99 cents on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, anyway, how long have you been going? Uh, we are at one hour and six minutes. Mm, you want to you wanna end the show soon-ish? I think we're, you know, leave, leave him hanging. Leave him one and more. I mean, it's it's completely up to you. I'll keep going. I'll turn it off. I don't give a shit. Eh, let's uh, well, let's end it now. Like uh, Matt Forney doesn't love his audience. I love you considerably. I love you so much that uh, we're gonna give you more next week. I don't like you people, to be honest with you. Who's that fucking? Before we go, who's that fucking? I want to talk about this. I never address these things. Some guy was a real butthole about me on the Twitter. Yeah, some guy, you know, uh, tweeted at the account and said something effective like, I was really looking forward to uh, Matt Forney's interview with uh, uh, Brian, uh, with uh, Mark Zolo, but uh, your, his co-host, Brian, just completely fucked it up and ruined the vibe of the interview. And I was like, eh, Okay, well, whatever. Uh, whoever, if you're out there listening, um, Mark Zolo likes me more than you. All right? Well, That's the, a fact. That, one of the first things Mark Zolo did was start laughing. Before we started recording, we started laughing. I didn't know who this guy was. He knew who I was and started fucking laughing. And, and he just was a he was a joy to talk to. He was one of my favorite guests that we've had. And Mark Zolo likes me more than you. All right? You little butthole. So, look, this is Terror House Radio. You're going to have to learn to love it. I'm here. If you don't like me, go listen to Matt Forney Live. Buttholes. Whenever that I can go do an episode. Well, he, I mean, that just that hurt my feelings, Matt. Yeah, you you are a notoriously sensitive soul. I really, I'm a sensitive artist. I'm a painter. I I I, I wrote two things one time. I'm a sensitive soul. I'm a sensitive artist. My feelings. My fucking sweet you can, feelings. You can, you can I, experience the sensitive soul of Bryden uh, on his DLive channel at dlive.tv slash Bryden. And his website. The link is to that is in the description. It's just brydenproctor.com. You're not going to say it? Brydenproctor.com. Go over there. It's everything on the, the Terror House YouTube and my YouTube combined into one glorious feed, which is shit that you probably already subscribed to if you listen to this fucking podcast anyway. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, and as for me, you know, you can find my YouTube, uh, YouTube my website, mattforney.com, my tw- uh, Telegram, my DLive, all that shit. Uh, next week, we're uh, going to have Andy Nowicki on to talk about uh, his new book, Under the Nihil, and oh. all, all kinds of stuff. Oh, I'm going to call him Andy No Dicky. I'm. I think he actually. I, I think he actually called himself that once. <laughs> yeah, I call him Andy No Dicky. <laughs> nah, trust me, he's he's way more he's way more self uh, deprecating than any insults you could throw his way. Wait, wait, you know, uh, you know me after uh, Taco Bell, I'm I'm more self defecating. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, the rim shot. That was good. Bam. But anyway, yeah. Rim job. Um, that's I, me hanging out. Rim job. That's me hanging out at your mom's house. Yeah, yeah, that'll do it for this episode of Terror House Radio. Be sure to check in every day at Terror House Magazine, terrorhousemag.com, for our latest publications. Check out our books at Terror House Press at terrorhousepress.com. Holy shit. Matt, Follow Matt, our social Matt, media links Matt, in the description. Matt, Matt, Matt you're going to fucking hate me. I what? I forgot to press record. I'm just kidding. I press record. <laughs> I got you, idiot. Are you dumb or stupid or dumb? Huh? Follow. Uh, don't forget that you can always check out past episodes of Terror House Radio at terrorhouseradio.com. Terror House Radio is produced by Brian Proctor and presented by Jugs. Intro music by Me Extremist. Illegitimate Iron Cover Random. Don't let the bastards go down. I'm Matt Forney with Brian Proctor, and we are out. Mm-hmm.